Hi guys, this is Andy, the Expedition Hiker. So today I want to talk about basics. So if you are considering them, just getting into hiking, here's a few tips and skills to have a great and safe day when out. So by breaking it down into three parts, preparation, kit and enjoyment. So before going to the first part, let me just say it's easier to go out for a walk, it's just one foot in front of the other. It doesn't need to cost much and a bit of common sense and you'll have a great day out. Number one, pack your kit beforehand, the day or evening before. Rather than just throwing your gear in a bag just before you go out, as odds are you're going to forget something that could end up being quite crucial. Number two, tell someone where you're going when you are going and what time you are aiming to be back to remember once you do get back to give them a call just to say yeah I'm safe I'm home and uh, they don't have to worry okay number three I would suggest if you are just going into hiking and the outdoors to go out with others not an old experienced fart like me and going wandering alone so then make it sure that everyone in your group knows the plan of the day the route you're taking where breaks and lunches will be and what time you aim to finish and where. Just in case you get uh, separated from your group, you can try and reconnect them with them later in the day. So on that point, try to stay together. In, even if you spread apart, you want to be able to see other members of your group at all times. So four, check the weather we are going. In the UK, look at the Met Office or BBC Weather apps. And when you're going into the national parks, then the Mountain Weather Information Service is a good choice. We'll leave the link down here. So, five, enjoy your day. Look where you're going. Embrace nature, the outdoors, and your surroundings. Okay, so let's talk about the second section, which is kit. So what kit do you need to take with you to have a safe and a great day out? So the first thing I would say is navigation. So, a map and a compass. So map and compass is a navigation aid. Print out a copy of your route as well. It just makes it easier in case there's any problems and it's easier to follow your route. If you're using your phone and using an app like the View Ranger or OS Maps, learn how to follow the route and the basics before you go out into the outdoors. So I'll be doing a video on the View Ranger basics soon. So keep tuned for that. And on that point, if you like hiking, backpacking, long distance walking, I'd like to learn some tips and skills on the great outdoors as well as download some routes for yourself then please consider subscribing so second thing we're going to talk about is footwear number two so footwear together with a map your footwear are the most important things you need for hiking straight walking your footwear needs to secure your feet so get a good fit and have your shoelaces tight and secure as you begin to walk Laces will loosen a little, but secure boots will keep your feet in the same place. Because the worst thing is going downhill, and your feet move to the toe of your boot, causing great pain, which can sometimes feel like your feet are being crushed. So, in the UK, boots over walking shoes for winter are advisable on wet ground, long grass, snow, or rocky conditions, on the hills and the mountains. Leather boots that have a sturdy sole, waterproof, and give good support in the ankle, or you can go for Gore-Tex fabric boots are also ideal. Number three is rucksacks. So look for a waterproof bag, or if you're going for a water resistant one, put everything inside your bag in separate poly bags or dry bags like this. This keeps all your gear inside dry and secure. Have two shoulder straps to equal the weight and balance across your back. Look for around, for a day hike, you want around a 15 to 25 litre rucksack, and if you have side pockets, it's good for carrying items you may need, like your water bottle and uh, any snacks. So number four is clothing. So first things first, avoid cotton at all costs. So no cotton socks, no cotton trousers, as in jeans, and no cotton t-shirts. If or when you begin to sweat, moisture will gather. Cotton clothing cannot draw the moisture away from the body which is very difficult to dry and creates cold spots. This goes the same way if your cotton clothes get wet from the rain or snow, it just won't dry out, causing you to be wet and cold throughout the day. 
and could cause health conditions like hydrothermia, which is a deadly illness in the outdoors. So starting at the bottom and working our way up, we start with the socks. So look for hiking and walking socks. Again, avoid cotton, but merino wool or smart wool will keep your feet warm, dry, and draw any moisture away from your feet, as your feet can sweat being in your boots all day. So trousers, go for something light and stretchy. Don't wear jeans, again, possibly jogging bottoms or leggings. They like to be made of polyester, lycra, and nylon. A good trousers start walking in. So we're moving at the top half of our body now. So we're looking at the base layer. So a t-shirt or long sleeve top, synthetic are the best choice. So the type you would wear if you're going to the gym or playing some sport. As they draw moisture away from the body, by wicking, keeping you dry and warm. Next, we want to look at our mid layer. This is what we call our warm layer or our insulation layer. So you could have either a fleece or a sweater or even an, a down jacket, just as long as it's not made of cotton, as this is your warmth and insulation layer. Next is our waterproof, what we call the outer layer or the outer shell. A waterproof jacket is a must for going hiking. You need to carry waterproofs even on a sunny day, as especially in the hills and mountains, the weather can change fast. Not always how the weather has been forecasted. So here's the technical bit. There are different membranes that keep the water out, but equally have breathability properties. The ability of a fabric to evaporate sweat and vapour. A membrane is a thin layer of water resistant plant material, usually measured as HH, which means hydrostatic head which is the measure of water resistance materials can withstand. Each outdoor brand has their own membrane, like Burgas has Hydrochel, Sprayway is Hydrodry, like this one. Um, also, we've got North Face is Future Tight, and Caramore use Event membrane. So, and Gore-Tex has a hydrostatic head of 28,000, which is the best, but also the most expensive. So you want to start off with looking at the cheaper membranes, and then eventually go on to find something like the Gore-Tex material. Next is hats and gloves. Always carry them in your bag. Even in the summer months, it can get a bit chilly. It's always useful just to have a bit of a beanie and a set of gloves. Now, in the summer months, you may go for a baseball cap or sun hat and sunglasses. So like most of the items listed here, you can just put them in your bag just in case. So the next thing is your first aid kit, a small kit with just essential items in. Best to make one up for yourself that fits your individual needs. I have a video that I will add here and in the description on a great first aid kit. You should always carry a first aid kit as it just could save your life. So next is hydration, so a water bottle. So I take a, a minimum of one litre. Best to get a flip lid rather than screw on. There's a possibility you may drop the screw lid onto a dirty and muddy floor. So a flip lid is easy to just flip it off, drink your water, flip it back on. So next part is food. So a good hearty cat lunch and snacks along the way. Think of foods of energy. Trail mix is a classic. Make it up yourself. I go for chocolate peanuts M&M's, then honey roasted peanuts, plus mixed dried fruit, all in one Ziploc bag. Great for energy and as a treat too. The choice is yours. Then there's fresh fruit or dry fruit. Energy bars, granola, gels and cereal bars. Tuna or oily fish snacks. Jerky or other types of dried meats. Think about how you pack items, especially in the summer where the sun can be beating down on your rucksack, heating up everything inside. So something like hot soggy cheese may not be the best for your lunch. Emergency rations. What for? Well, energy, salt and warmth. So think about a chocolate bar, sweet drink, an energy bar like Kendall Mint Cake, which is made of just sugar, glucose and peppermint. Although there are other varieties like chocolate, coated or even liqueur. Although eating a full bar of mint cake with all that energy, you could be batsing over those hills and mountains. So now we're moving down to the last few items in the bag, but all of them still is quite essential. So a whistle, emergency whistle. So you would use emergency whistle if you're going to uh, fog or you're trying to find a member of your group who also has a whistle. Uh, what you do is blow one sharp blast 
every 10 seconds. So you do it six over a minute. The next is a headlamp. In particular, in the winter months, it can get dark quite fast. So it's always useful to have a headlamp to obviously see where you're going. Better than a torch, because you know, obviously a torch, you've got to carry in your hands. Headlamp directs where your eyes are looking. So next is walking poles. So these improve your balance, your pace, your stamina, as well as helping you climb and descend the hill. So last few things, A, a camera. Now, most of us have a camera on our phone, so you could use that. If you are using your phone for taking photos and using it as an app, like you're using Viewranger and OS Map, like I said before, then remember to take a battery charger with you because you don't want to get up on the hills halfway through your route, you've been taking lots of photos and then your, your phone battery runs out. So take a battery charger with you and remember the lead so you can charge it up on the go. So remember to take your phone and as I said before, keep it charged in case you get into an emergency, you might need to ring somebody. The last thing of all is take some cash. It's always great to take your bank card with you, but the thing is on the day, when you go into the countryside, not everyone uses cards, some people prefer cash, and other places don't have the internet. To use a card for transaction, you need the internet. So you may go to a place that needs cash, even going for an ice cream. So that's basically everything you need to go out and enjoy the outdoors. So, like I said before, you don't need all the expensive gear, but you just need a few items, put them in your rucksack, some items you may never need to use. My first aid kit comes out once a year, maybe less than that, but it's there in case of an emergency. Especially in the winter weather, when it's cold and damp and it gets dark early, those items I've already mentioned are good to make you safe and enjoy your day better. Now the last thing I just need to say is basically enjoy it. Embrace the countryside. It is a great place great locations within the UK and obviously worldwide as well. So just want to say stay safe, look after yourselves and I'll see you soon. So bye bye hikers. Mm -hmm.